G'day everyone, I'm Brett and welcome back to Self Reliance Australia. This week's episode, we go through painting the kitchen. Um, so look, this is something I was a bit suspect of, so look, painting over laminates can be a bit tricky and look, what I didn't want was an old kitchen that looked like it just had been painted over the top of. Um, but anyway, look, there's a product out that says it looks really good and I've seen some reviews and other people have tried it and recommended it. Uh, so let's get into it. So our job over the next few days is to paint this kitchen. So at this moment, it's sort of like an apricotty type of color. You can see as we come around, that's a excuse the kitchen. I haven't actually cleaned it this morning yet. But here we go, we've got these drawers and cupboards as we go around. So there's a bit to do. I've got like a center island here as well. So the plan is that I need to clean them first. I'm gonna to have to wash them down because over the years, you know, you think about any sort of kitchen, I suppose, and they're gonna get um, just build up in residue. And so this is the, the product that I'll be washing it down with. So it's Sally's sugar soap. And essentially what that does is it helps us to get all the grime and the build up over the years that just get onto a surface so it's gonna be, and look, I use that also before I paint any walls. So not just kitchen cabinets, but walls themselves. So that's gonna go first. Then I'm gonna have to clean that off. So wash it down again, just with some straight clear water. Um, let it dry out and then start applying the paint. But before I do the paint, I've got an under, like a special undercoat that goes onto this Lemonex material because that actually, the paint doesn't always adhere to that very well. So there's a special two pack primer that you have to put onto that. And then the paint should needs to go onto that two pack primer very, very nicely. So the plan of attack will be to wash it with the sugar soap, take it up then clean that sugar soap off, clean the residue, resi, residue of the sugar soap off, um, and then take all these handles off too. So I'm going to take all the handles off. I'll probably take the drawers out completely. And to be honest, I'm only going to do like a, a front coat paint. Um, you might notice that these doors are the same color inside as well as outside. Um, but to start with, all I'm going to do is a front door paint. Um, the tins of paint only come in like a one or two litre tin. Uh, the biggest tin I could get was a two litre tin, but they didn't have any of those, so I'd get two one litre tins. Um, so I, look, I don't believe that's gonna get me around this whole kitchen. But we'll see how we go, but we're gonna make a start. So first up, we'll be clean, take the door handles off, and then get into it. So this is the gear I'm using. So I've just got some heavy duty gloves uh, because I am using a, a cleaner. Um, I'm just going to, I'm going to try a microfiber cloth for this one. Normally I'd use, just use like a, a scouring pad, a bit of a rough surface, on, but look, there's nothing that's really on these cupboards that needs to be scrubbed off. It's really just a wash down to get the, um, get whatever is on there off. Uh, so we get a clean surface really, so there's nothing really that needs to be scrubbed, scrubbed off, so it's really just a wash down. Then I've just got like a chucks cloth, that's just a porous cloth, cloth that um, you can use to soak up water and then squeeze out. But I'll probably use that either as we're going through to pick up some water that I spill on the floor, um, then I'll get a clean one with a clean bucket of water um, to go over the whole lot again once I'm done. But I'm about to add in that sugar soap and I'm sure they they do this to let people know. Oh, that's better. I was going to say they put it in really, really fine small print, so I can't read it. I need to go get some glasses. But that actually helps through the foam. That half a cup, yep, radio. Um, 
But I'm not going to put half a cup into that much water. Um, this will just be a light wipe down. The, the cupboards are pretty clean, really. So anyway, that's the safety gear. Make sure when you're doing this type of work, you do protect yourself. Well, you don't need chemicals over your skin. It just doesn't go well um, in the long term. I know sometimes you might not think that's going to do too much in the short term, but over the long term it has an impact. So play it safe and if you're doing any work around the house. So day two, uh, this is, I guess, the primer that I'm putting on. It's a two pack. So I've had a little tube of stuff. I've had to pop into there. I've had to stir it up. So I've stirred that up for a couple of minutes and I've put it on, but uh, to my surprise, <clears throat> you can see the sheen on that, but it's really clear. Um, it's really come up as a clear finish. Uh, at the shop, they will tell me it's going to be a cream finish. Um, maybe as it's drying, there's a little bit of a creamy sheen to it coming through, perhaps. Especially if I look at the bottom, but I'm not too sure if that's just the lighting at this stage. Um, but how I'm putting that on, so I'm using just a, I think it's about a 35mm brush to do the edges. So these areas down under here, I can't quite get the roller into that. But I'm also using these little microfiber four mil nap so the, the four mil nap the nap part is the length of the actual fluffy stuff on the roller and the the smaller that nap is the smoother the finish will be one of the mistakes i made uh, last year with when i was painting a door was i was using the same roller as i did for painting walls and i couldn't get a nice a nice smooth finish um, and then I worked out I need to use a smaller than that, but look, that's how it's going so far. Look, I've taped it up overnight. You can see I've got tape all around the bottom. Um, and look, it's not really drippy, I have to say. So that's probably not too bad, but as you can see, what I've done over here, this is my progress so far. I'm having to leave the cupboards open so they dry. Um, and essentially I am doing what I would call a doors closed paint. As I mentioned yesterday, so I'm not going to be painting the inside of the cupboard doors. Um, look, I may do, may do down the track. I might get super excited. Depends how much paint I've got left over. This is going a lot further than I thought it was. I'll be honest. This is a there's a fair bit of painting to do here, and that's only like a little tin. I can't even see what size it is. Well, it might be a yeah. There you go, one liter. Um, and I would not have thought one litre would cover as much as it has so far. And I've got more than half a tin left. And I've done all those cupboards there. And I've done around here and I've still got a lot more on my tray. So I'm going to be, this is my next port. I'm going to do the island bench next. Um, and you will see I do have some old underlay that I've got left lying around. And that's, look, that makes a great drop cloth. And it's also a little bit easier because I'm sitting on the floor and on my knees doing this. So it adds a little bit of protection for my old knees that have no cartilage left in them um, because actually being on a cold tile floor does not help but one of the things I did overnight so if you're wondering um, some of the prep work I did so yes I mentioned about the sugar soap so I did all that cleaning but on the tin it says not to paint in conditions that when the surface is colder than 10 degrees so last night we've had a lot of rain come through in the last day we've had beautiful weather up until yesterday as fate would have it um, so I put the, the heater on overnight um, and just left it at a nice 18 degrees so it's not overly hot so I'm not just burning electricity um, but it was enough to keep the inside of the house warm warm enough so I could come in this morning first thing and start painting um, otherwise I wouldn't have had to paint today until I actually crank the heater up and heat the house up because overnight it can get quite cold down here even, even though we are in the middle of summer at the moment when that rain comes in it gets quite cold so that's the progress. Um, and then I'll just kind of do exactly the same thing. So using that little, so it's only like a hundred mil roller. So a little tiny, teeny one. So as a, as a example, there's my hand span and it's bigger than the, bigger than the tray. So that's not a big roller at all. If you want to get sort of like some dimensions across it, it's just really like a four inch roller. Um, that's what I'm going over. So keeping this underlay on the floor as a bit of a drop cloth, but also to keep my knees safe. Um, and then I'll get back onto this island bench next and start working my way around. So here we go. Um, all done. Just letting it dry off now. Some of the earlier stuff has already 
just touch dry. But basically I just leave the cupboards open. Um, so I say that those cupboards there were touch dry, so I just gently close them back up. Uh, but that was good. It went a lot further than I thought it was going to go. Look, that little tin I had, I thought I was going to buy another couple of those, but I did not. In fact, I've still got more than half a tin left after doing all of that. So it actually covered exceptionally well. So now I'm just going to let it dry overnight. So I'll leave it another day, come back in the morning and start applying the top coat. So we've started first coat is on with the white on some of it so you can see it's come around here this is probably the best finish i've got so far so that looks pretty good i'm pretty happy with the finish on that one so we come around you see i've only done sort of half the kitchen or maybe two thirds so i've got three you can see that still still needs another coat to get full coverage on that as you see i've come around and i haven't done over this part yet so i'm about to do that now but basically what I did, I basically used up all the paint that was in the tray, took the roller out and I tossed the roller because I bought a 10 pack of the rollers um, and it was starting to get flattened, it's starting to fall apart. So what I've realized that those are sort of like more throwaway items. But as you can see, I've done the back of that, I haven't done the back of that door, but I've done the front. Now, I know that might seem like a quick and easy way to do it, maybe a cheater's way of going about things, but the key is actually make the kitchen look brighter and lift it and get more light in uh, and make it look a little bit more modern. Um, so that was the plan. I think that will work once it's all done. Actually, that island bench is looking pretty nice so far, even though it's only the first coat, so I'm pretty happy with that. So first coat is now finished. Come through, Let's see that through there. And you can probably see the difference between this door and the others. Um, like the, sort of put a second coat on that one, probably like more like one and a half coats rather than two coats. Um, Cause I was running very low on paint. So I sort of emptied the roller onto that door before I um, changed changed over with the new paint and, and a new roller. But um, Definitely can tell the difference. So that's actually come up pretty well. I'm really happy with the way that door has come up and knowing that's gonna have another coat on it tomorrow as well. So um, all of that is there. Some of the doors I've had to sort of leave open. Pretty happy. So that's the progress so far. And then I'll let it sit. Now they do recommend leaving it sit for eight hours. So if I can get a bit of a long distance shot of the kitchen now, like I know I've got the breakfast stuff out there from the kids. Um, but yeah, so it's a lot whiter, isn't it? Before and after shots, looks a lot better. So they do say eight hours between um, coats, basically to keep the gloss. They said if you do it any less than eight hours, um, you can lose the gloss finish. Now the paint that I'm using for this is Jewelux Renovation Range. It's for cabinet doors. It's specifically made for kitchen cupboards and going on to Laminex. Um, so look, that's a one litre tin and I've done the whole lot with that one litre tin. I've actually bought two one litre tins thinking that that wouldn't be enough. I actually thought I'd only get through half of it with the two litres, but um, it's actually spread really well. Covered, get covered very well. So uh, I may not even need the second tin yet at this stage, because I've still got probably about half a tin there left. And noting that the first one does all the covering and the second one sort of just finishes it off, which should be good, but look, I've been happy with the quality of that product, um, it's done well. The truth will be on the second coat. So here's an update, this wall I've had to do three times, because <clears throat> the second coat didn't come up and cover it as well as I would have liked. There's still some, I guess it wasn't a full, a full coverage that I was happy with, but that third coat is good. The rest of it, however, 
I'm not too sure it's just the light on that particular wall, but the rest of it has come up really good with two coats. Uh, we've got some handles on already, so I put some of them on this morning while I was trying to be quiet before the house got moving. Now it takes about seven days for this to harden fully, so the kitchen will still be not completely operational. You'll see you know, cookbooks and stuff all over the place, uh, things out of the cupboards because we need to do that while um, the paint hardens. So the plan over the next day or two will be to put some of those handles back on, but also I'm going to now go and move up to this cupboard above the benches and do that as well. That was full of cookbooks there the other day, so I've had to empty that, I've cleaned it, I now need to wait 24 hours, to let that dry out completely so there's no moisture on it. And then I'll start the process again with those ones, but these other ones should be good to go. And the result has come up quite nicely. So there you go, another job is done. Now look, that's now been in play for about six, seven months. Uh, it's held up really well and I'm really happy with the end result. Look, it doesn't look like it's just been a repaint over the kitchen. Uh, it's held up, it has lifted the kitchen significantly, especially with using the white as opposed to that old apricot color that we had. Um, it used to be very dark, it felt dark in there. Whereas now with the, the white it has lifted and it's a lot brighter and looks a lot cleaner as well. And it's definitely helped it look a lot newer and modern, um, even though it's the same old kitchen. Uh, but look, highly recommend it. You have to do the prep work though. I think with any painting job, as I've said before, the quality of a paint job really comes down to the preparation. But look, if you've enjoyed that and you found it useful, please give us a big thumbs up. And if you haven't already, please subscribe. That'd be greatly appreciated as that helps the channel to grow. So thanks very much for tuning in again. And until next time, I'll see you then.